reviews are just harder to write than others. So <laughs> I make a point of writing a review. Sometimes they're really long, sometimes they're really short, but regardless, I try to always write a review. With that in mind, if I'm reading a book and I know it's not going well, for whatever reason, I have to reconsider. So the first book that I did not finish in the month of June, I wanna be clear that I stopped reading it intentionally because I wanted to give the book a fair shake. Sometimes I get into these situations where I'm reading too much of similar things. And the reason why I always know that's happening is because I'll start reading something and immediately start comparing it to everything else that I've read whether that's good or bad. So I'm not saying that it's good or bad, but it's just like I'm immediately making a pair comparison. And that's what happened. Sorry, my allergies. <laughs> that's what happened with one of my IWSG book club reads for the month of June, which was the Futhark Chronicles Keepers of Salbreath. I think that's how you say that. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the first book in a series. And so I had re been reading a lot of fantasy. I had literally just finished reading a fantasy when I picked this one up. And so I, this is what I posted on Goodreads. I haven't rated this yet, but it says, I started Keepers of Salbreath at a bad time and will temporarily DNF it. I will come back to it later. And so that's what I'll do. I'll come back to it later after I've had a chance to read some other stuff. I'm currently reading A Cozy Mystery. I'm also reading um, A Romance. I just finished reading some nonfiction. So I think about one or two books, um, after that, um, I'll go back and try that one again after I haven't read so much fantasy kind of back to back. So let's get into the stuff that I did finish in the month of June. Uh, if you saw my short um, Goodreads wrap up, you know that I'm one book behind because of that, but I'm not really worried about that. Um, it doesn't, it's not a true reflection of what I've been reading because I've also been beta reading and it just so happens that the trilogy that I've been beta reading is also a fantasy. <laughs> anyway, so here is the next book, which is a fantasy. <laughs> this is the other IWSG book club read for the month of June. I read this one first, so by the time I got to the other one, you know, it's just one of those things. So anyway, this one is Wilder's Prize. This is the first of a trilogy. And um, after finishing this book, well, let me just get into the review. So I gave it an overall Goodreads star rating of five, but let's get into the actual review. Okay, it says, actual rating 4.75. I really enjoyed this book and have already picked up the rest of the series. Before I get into everything I adore about this book, <laughs> I want to mention why it's not a full five-star rating. There is content in this book depicting, ah, <laughs> depicting <laughs> domestic violence slash child abuse. For some re readers, this content may be triggering, though I've been told an update has been issued to lessen some of this. Regardless, I do feel that it served a purpose to the story and didn't feel it was exploitive. Um, my main issue is that by the end of the story, none of those who witnessed this treatment ever really acknowledged their role in it. I felt it was a missed opportunity, though I am glad some aspects of this are addressed in the book. Now on to the good stuff. Jasmine is the ship's boy on the Wilder's Prize. Such a fitting name once you get into the book. This is me trying not to give spoilers while being giddy. She loves almost everything about her life aboard the ship and is devastated when she is taken from it. I mean, like someone stole her puppy devastated. <laughs> Even her other shipmates don't seem as upset as she is but they don't have the same connection to the ship that she does. Getting back to the prize is her main focus until a young wilder shows interest in her. Now she has several cans of worms to deal with that simply don't go away once she's back on the prize. Aside from dealing with the magical elements of the story, there are many relationship dynamics presented. This book brings into question the loyalty a crew has for their captain, and what's the divining line between mutiny and doing the right thing? There are also other loyalty conflicts presented in this story, as well as the notion of what makes a family a family. 
Is the ship's crew a family or are they just roommates who work together to keep the ship afloat? There's also a question about parentage and what makes a parent a parent. Lots to think about here. This is a classic high seas adventure with a fun fantasy spin. This is not a lighthearted jolly tale of pirates and mages. This is a gritty action and serious pirate intrigue. The magical elements of the story reveal themselves slowly and I like that. As the story progresses, we learn a little more and I have a feeling there is more to learn in the books to come. Highly recommend it to fans of sword and sorcery fantasy, YA fantasy, and books with a strong female lead. So there you have it, Wilder's Prize, the first five-star read of the month. Guys, this was a five-star month for me. It, I know. Let's get into the next one. Pegasus, A Journey to New Eden. This is a book that I picked up a long time ago, but you know, when you're adding on to your TBR, stuff slips through the cracks. And I had the pleasure of interviewing the author of this book, James L. Hill, for my Read Local show um, right here on YouTube. So I finally was like, let me pick this up and check it out. And it was very enjoyable. Let's get into the review. So overall, good read star rating of five, actual rating 4.5. I think as I get older, I get a little lazier in my leisure pursuits. For me, this book is hard science. Whether that's true or not, it had many technical aspects I wasn't expecting when I started reading it. Still, <laughs> um, everything played an important role in the delivery of the overall story. This is a thrilling story from beginning to end, but if you're not into hard science fiction or struggle with it as I do, this may be a four instead of a five-star read for you. Still, despite the technical jargon and speech, I really enjoyed this book. The only reason I didn't read it faster is because that I always read more than one book at a time. Like literally, if I could have the intention span to read just one thing at a time, I would get through books a lot quicker, but I'm always reading multiple books. And this one, when I was reading it, it was just flying. Yeah, back into the review. Um, highlights from the story include the terrifying spiders that can save you or destroy you, David, and the ship itself. This is mostly a dual perspective book, which I usually enjoy, but it took me some time to get used to the back and forth. Ultimately, it was helpful to have access to those alternating points of view. Highly recommended to fans of hard science fiction, realistic space travel concepts, doomsday fiction, and stories with strong Black characters. So yeah, the main characters in this story are Black, but that's not part of the story. Like, it's not a story about Black people in space, if that makes sense. Um, they just happen to be Black, and they're in space, and it's awesome. Check it out. Okay. Last five-star read of the month. This one is actually a short review because sometimes less is more. After reading this book, I just didn't have a whole lot to say other than how much I appreciated the book. So let's just get into it. How I Found My Right Path, a compilation of letters, overall star rating of um, five. <laughs> this was actually my read with Faith. Let me, you know what? Let's get into the review. I really enjoyed this book and read it at a time when I really needed to. This was my read with Faith selection for, the, for June, 2022. As much as I got out of this book, I would not recommend it to anyone who isn't some type of creative, either professionally or as a hobbyist. This book expresses the true passion of being a writer. And if you, and if you aren't a writer or a creative, this book may be too much for you. If you love to read and don't care about what writers go through to bring, to bring the world their stories, please skip this. Don't read this and leave a bad review because you just didn't get it. If you are a reader who is genuinely interested in the passions of those who write, keep that in mind when you write your review. Some books are written for everyone. Some are written just for readers or fans. And this book is written for writers and anyone pursuing a creative passion. Seriously, this book had me laughing and crying. I, it's a really fun read, but it does tug at the heartstrings of those with creative pursuits. I highly recommend this to authors or creators at any level of their journey, but especially those currently aspiring. So yeah, this was a really good book. I do feel though that 
if you're not someone who's like pursuing a passion or something, you just may not get some of this. But for those of you who get it, you're gonna get it. So that is what I read in the month of June. Um, please tell me what you thought of some of the things I read. What did you read? And um, if you're in the US and you're celebrating, be safe out there. And I'll talk to you guys next time.